So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio and my YouTube channel. And I'm super excited to be joined by the very lovely Connie Hyde. Thank you for joining me. Oh, pleasure, Matthew. I was looking at my jam-packed schedule and I thought, where can I fit you in? <laughs> now, obviously, <laughs> life, life as we know it has been completely, you know, turned up on its head. I mean, for you, how has this whole lockdown, the whole, you know, situation we found ourselves in over the last year, how has that affected you? Right. Well, I think I've been incredibly lucky uh, in the fact that um, I haven't had anyone ill, touch wood, seriously ill. So um, that's the main thing. Um, everybody's been safe. Um, so incredibly uh, fortunate in that. Um, um, I, I also have an allotment which has saved my sanity and soul um, because I do live in London and I haven't got a garden. Um, so, um, yeah, and I'm a, I'm a huge gardener. In fact, the, the year before, weird enough, I did do a City and Gills um, year-long course in professional gardening just because I love gardening and didn't really know much to do um, but actually that's been really fortuitous because I've got work because I haven't been working as an actor I've got work as a gardener in the in the lockdown so um, so that's kept me going and but I've got two teenage sons and I think um, oh not easy for them is it they should be out <laughs> snogging and getting up to mischief I mean, the good thing with obviously the gardening is we are getting to that time of year where it's starting to get, you know, you can get back out there, obviously, you know, you know, just just general pruning and all that sort of thing. So it's so good for your mental health as well. Just being out in the fresh air, um, you know, you know, looking at nature as well. It's, it's just it's a really relaxing thing to do. Oh, it, it will. It will um, bring us back to life, I think. And, and actually, I did a specialist course, um, uh, STH, which was social and therapeutic horticulture, uh, which was fascinating and something actually uh, I will I will persevere because it was just it was additional needs gardening, um, especially d dementia gardening as well, which is uh, incredibly important you know especially if someone's been passionate about the garden but also like you're saying for uh, health mental health um physical uh keeping you going you know it's um so anyone even going out for a walk and now seeing the little bulbs coming up it's wonderful isn't it it's just it's, 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 i mean for me i say i i've when I can, I, I get out in the garden and do what I can. I mean, I'm not a massive gardener, but there's something about just, just you know, whether it's just cutting the grass or just that smell of just being out, you know, the different flowers, the different smells that you get from the flowers and just watching things like bees flying around in the garden is quite nice as well. Oh, and, and I think people have been really into birds as well, watching the birds, and, you know, out there. So hopefully if anything's come from it's an appreciation of nature if anything's come from this horrendous time so and the other thing as well is it has you know given us a real appreciation for the amazing nhs uh, healthcare assistants you know key workers that are doing such a great job oh I'm, I'm, both my parents were nurses so worked for the nhs for 40 years both of them so i've always had a um a huge admiration for uh the nhs um uh, but personally, yeah, my my mum used to work nights when I was little. My dad worked days, you know, so uh, they absolutely worked their horses off, you know. I've seen that firsthand. Now, for you, obviously, um, the bill was kind of where you got your big break. And that was back in, I think it was like 2002 when you started off playing the role of Kathy. So for you doing a role like that on such a big show like the bill, what was that like to, to be a part of that show? And how did that come about for you? Um... Well, it was the first regular I got, probably, um, but I'd had, um, oh, I thought one of my first jobs was the most incredible uh, series set in St. David's on a lifeboat. It was a Linda LaPlante series, and it was, um, and I was lucky enough to, it was one of Brendan Gleeson's first jobs. You know, Brendan Gleeson, he was, and he was playing the coxswain of the lifeboat, and I was the um, engineer. 
and uh, Carl Johnson, the amazing Carl Johnson, was my boyfriend. So I had I'd had done quite a lot of telly before that, weirdly enough. Um, uh, so, but the bill, yeah, was uh, probably um, yeah everybody probably remembers because it was sort of a couple of years. So um, I loved it. I loved the bill. I it, not only was it one of the most the biggest employers of actors, but you'd get people on their first. It was such a privilege because you'd get people as a regular on their first gigs out of drama school, and then and you'd see them. Uh, you know, on other things, you know, work, growing and learning. And it was, um, so you get these eager, young sort of 20 year olds coming in and um, and then you'd see them, yeah, catapult to do other things. So it was a real, um, and, and, it, and it was fast, uh, but everybody was there um, for the right reasons and worked hard and uh, and it was a great show. And it's, and I still get letters now, I still get people stopping me now going, what a shame they could they they got rid of it really because um it really ticked a box of something you could watch with older kids you know and I don't know if it was it wasn't replaced with anything like that I think it was replaced with reality stuff but it was a real um you know something that people could watch with their kids well teenagers really you know so um um it's it's very missed I think they should bring it back shouldn't they Definitely, definitely. And I mean, Kathy was such an interesting character, so you must have loved playing that role. Oh, she was fascinating. And that was an absolute gift uh, for an actor because um, I just had the most fantastic storyline. As soon as I got one, I was like, oh, I can't get any better than this. And then I get another. Well, she, she had Munchausen, uh, Kathy, so she made things up for attention. So... Um, I did a lot of research into Munchausen, actually. So, um, uh, and so did the bill. They're very responsible, and we will probably talk about Coronation Street later on. You know, you know the responsibility of um, showing an illness like that. But uh, I must admit, it was a, it was a roller coaster, and uh, yeah, privilege to play. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing with, with, I mean, like what, I mean, one of the storylines in particular was obviously um, pretending to have HIV, which is obviously, you know, such a, 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 an important illness to raise awareness of. But, but I mean, it, it must have been kind of tricky to kind of tread those lines of playing someone who obviously, you know, is struggling um, with their mental health. But at the same mm. time, she is causing, you know, telling lies and causing such hurt to people. I guess that's why it's dramatic gold, isn't it? Because, um... Yeah, but you do have to play the truth of things. You know, you, it's not sort of all twistling, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do this. It's absolutely a truth for a lot of people, you know, that. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, it was very, you know, just to keep it real. But it, I mean, you know, the thing she got up to, irrelevant to the, the <laughs> you know, putting the munchies aside, but, you know, she really was. Uh, you know, I, I got to smash up a toilet once, I remember, with my, you know, and I'm the biggest coward you ever come across. So for, for me, it was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> Now, of course, fast forward um, to more recently, and as you say, Coronation Street, that must have been such a, a thrill to be a part of because it's such a huge show. Um, and to be um, the sister of Sally, who, of course, <laughs> is an amazing woman again. So that must have been so much fun to join join the cast of Corrie. Oh, well, it's, if you're a Northern actor, you, you know, it's your, oh, it's your ultimate dream. I defy any Northern actor not to... Um, uh so absolutely it was a dream dream come true and and i've been up for it over the years a few times which weirdly enough probably when you want interview people you'll find that in coronation something like that you do go up for it um in the years and, and usually quite a few of us in there had been up for a different part and then they get you back a few years later and, and weirdly enough at the time you think oh no i didn't get that and you know oh but then when you actually do get in it, if you're lucky enough to get a part straight, you know, you realise, oh, that's why. This is a this is a better. So they know what they're doing, really. Um, but Sally, I cannot 
Oh, I, I mean, I feel like she's my sister. I cannot tell you how. Well, you know, you've she's been on this show. Yeah, how she's beautiful. Absolute, exactly. I mean, having a, when when she joined me, she was one of the early guests that I had on the series, and didn't ta- you know? No, normally, when you're sort of organising these interviews, it can take a few, you know, a week or a couple of weeks to organise. She was literally like, "I'll do it," and then like I think later that afternoon or the following day, we were doing it. And it's just she's such a, a giving woman with her time, and thoroughly deserves her MBE, which she. Received received um uh, earlier this year i think it was um but yeah i mean for, for you when you get to join a show and be connected closely to someone like her you must feel like you've hit gold uh, doing you know working with her so closely well i was i was absolutely because um not only that she is incredible no she is a lovely person she's an incredible actress she is so versatile she can do anything and she's and also so passionate i mean you know i, I don't know is it 30 years she's been i shouldn't say that she'll probably <laughs> tell me off might be late we'll say 20 no it's longer than that um she still wants to rehearse you know say sal let's go and you know we were you know eager to just thirsty to make you know do the best work and um what's so funny she's such a such a brilliant comedic actress funny in real life um so you never really um it could have been a lot more frightening i think but because you had someone like that who is without ego and just passionate and about the job and getting on with it um yeah it was it was it was um yeah a, a, a absolute pleasure and i do miss her but i talk to her every week we do a a little sometimes well it was a coffee morning and now it's turned into prosecco <laughs> <laughs> a bit later on <laughs> No, with no. Cherilyn Houston as well. Do you know oh, Cherilyn yes. Houston? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we have that. And then, and it, yes, it's, it's a bit sneaky now, cause, only because Sal sent us one in the post, a bottle of Prosecco. Now, of course, one of the big storylines while you were there um, was Sally being sent to prison. Um, so, I mean, what was the... I mean, I imagine that doing a storyline like that, everyone loves Sally. What was the response like from, from the audience? Yeah, not good. <laughs> um yeah it's weird when I started going you see when I did the bill is I think there's a huge difference there was no social media or anything and I don't think we realized how um I probably would have got a terrible amount of negativity if if there was so I was very surprised um and in fact I wasn't on um oh what is it Facebook or um Twitter when I joined Coronation Street I'm not really that sort of um a social person not social media person um and then straight away within a day someone had set up two fake accounts in my name <laughs> you know which I, I was astonished you know so that i had to then you have to get a tick and whatever you know and get your own um but so i this is a, th- that was actually it wasn't the acting particularly <laughs> it was that you know and, and actually i shouldn't have read it you know because as you're saying she is very loved uh, but people take it very personally. And that's, the thing, and that's the thing with with obviously social media. You can get a hundred lovely comments, but you'll always see that one negative comment. And because <gasps> we're, we're built that way, we're, humans are built that way to kind of focus on things that you know maybe criticisms or or, or insults. But you'll miss all the the, the good stuff because you're, you're you're focusing on that one comment. I'm trying to work on that at the moment, Matthew. Actually, and I was looking, um, telling one of my boys who does exactly that. Uh, a, a fantastic books. I mean, anyway, um, but I was there was a I can't remember the podcast, but it was a it was an author, and he got five star reviews for all his books. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and yes, you know, and then one review with a one star, and he got obsessed with it. Couldn't sleep. You know, he was just completely ruminating, going, "Oh, why? Why did I get one star?" Anyway, um, so he looked into the person who'd given him one star. And found out that he'd given everybody one star. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this is what this person does. He slags off books and, you know, so that was wonderful. But what he didn't do, what the, what the interviewer asked him, well, did you look up the people who gave you five star reviews? He went, no, they're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, no, it's nonsense, isn't it? It's nonsense to keep hold of that. Why would you know so we've really got to train ourselves not to do that 
And I mean, I say that, you know, there is so much positivity out there and that's, that, that's what helps with mental health. And, and, you know, we keep referring back to mental health, but it's obviously so important. And it's one of those things that, that you need to keep, you know, keep positive. And especially in these dark times, you know, you need to hold on to, to the good, the fun, the, the things that make you happy. Mm. Yeah, and it's and it is very hard, like you're saying, Matthew, isn't it, when you're stuck and there's nowhere to go. But it's very necessary that we all do that, isn't it? You know, it's um, it's the only way it's going to go by us uh, keeping by the rules. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. being on Coronation Street for two years, I mean, was it a hard decision when you decided to leave? Was it is that a hard decision to make, or was it always in the in the pipelines? I, I didn't decide to leave. <laughs> Thank you. I would have loved to stay. Um, but it, I think, no, she will come back. I was uh, assured that very much so. It's not. Uh, but I think once you have a storyline like um, I did for the Christmas storyline, trying to sleep with your sister's husband, um, uh, it's necessary to go away for a while. <laughs> and I think <laughs> that's what happened I mean it, very much so they I had the most fantastic storylines and yes and I was um assured this is just a break you know and coming back so uh but actually things work out for a reason don't they Matthew because I think I needed to be at home as well because I had my, my son doing GCSE year and this and and it, and um I was commuting to Manchester every day so um you know, I'm a great believer in things happen for a reason. And, and, and if I go back, it'll be the right time, hopefully. I definitely hope that we see you back because Gina was such a, a fantastic character. And she fit in so well with like the, the underworld crowd. And she was just like one of the, it was like, like a, a great big family on that show. And I imagine that, that when you're working with not, not just Sally, but all of the amazing cast on that show, it must just feel like, I suppose it feel like home for you. Oh, Jimmy Harkison, it was just as well. Jimmy was just, I mean, he's just a genius as well, you know. Never, you never knew what he was going to do, which was wonderful. Almost like stage acting, you know, he was just every, so alive. Such an exciting actor. Um, So there were, there were incredible um, actors on that show. There are incredible actors. And the writers are at the top of their game. You know, it's not... It's not something that, I mean, they've, you know, they've they've written novels, they're writing plays all the time, they're doing other things. I mean, they really are the top of their game. Now, I just have to say, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. But before we go, have you got any messages you'd like to give to anyone who is stuck in hospital at the moment and, uh, and listening to our chat? Um, please, it will pass. Please stay strong and um, look out the window. If you've got lucky enough to see a window, just have a look out the The weather's changing. You might see some leaves or birds, but um, it will pass. It's got to, hasn't it? It really does, hopefully. Yeah. Now, again, Connie, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, keep safe. Um, and hopefully we'll speak again soon. You too, Matthew. Bye now. Keep safe. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>